Get ready to test your Bible knowledge with Sunday School Trivia! First question, what was the name of Moses' brother? The answer is Aaron. Did you know that there's a talking donkey in the Bible? Read the full story in Numbers 22 and 27. What was David's job before he became the king of Israel? The answer? A shepherd! Did you know that the Bible was written by over 40 different authors? It actually took over 1600 years to write the Bible. Here's the next trivia question. How many books are there in the Bible? The answer is 66. Did you know Goliath is the tallest person in the Bible? He stood about nine and a half feet tall. Next question, do you know who King Solomon's father was? The father of King Solomon was King David. Did you know that the first English Bible wasn't published until 1380 AD? What is the first book of the New Testament? The answer is Matthew. There are many animals in the Bible, but one animal that's never mentioned is the domestic cat. What did King Solomon ask God to give him? The answer is wisdom. Did you know that the shortest verse in the Bible is John 11 and 35? It only has two words, Jesus wept. What river was Jesus baptized in? That's right, it's the Jordan River. Did you know that the first animal out of the ark was a raven? The next animal to leave, a dove. Okay, here's the last trivia question. Who was Abraham and Sarah's son? That's right, the answer is Isaac. Did you know that after Moses saw the Lord, his face glowed? Afterwards, he had to wear a veil to cover his face. Thank you for playing Sunday School Trivia. The wait is over, now the real fun begins. Good morning, Pastor Meadows.
and our Hutchinson Missionary Baptist Church family. I am Michael Gibbs and I am serving Deacon Michael Gibbs who served as superintendent of the Sunday School. And today we have an outstanding lesson. The title of the lesson is Justice Prevail. We're coming out of the book of Luke, our devotional reading, Luke 19th chapter, verses 11 through 26, and Esther, verses 7 chapter, verses 1 through 10. And when we look at this lesson today, I picked up on a couple of things, a couple of points in this lesson. It talks about plots, and there are two plots that um, we're going to talk about today in our lesson. And I'm just introducing today, no, I'm not going to tell a story, but we have uh, Sister Jennings that will come forth and give us our lesson review. But I do want to share with you a verse that I got out of that, this lesson today. And to me, it was one of our key verses. And if you follow along with us, you can look at verse 10. It says, so they hang Haman on the gallop that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then was the king's wrath uh, pacified. So that was one of the key verses in reading this lesson today. But I'm not going to go into details. At this time, we're going to bring Sister Jennings forth and she, for us, and she will give us our lesson review. Um, we pray that you will at home continue to read these lessons because it's very, very important. This is where we learn about God's word in Sunday school. Sunday school is very important to us and we're going to encourage you, we are encouraging you to please participate in Sunday school with us. One more thing before Sister Jennings comes, if you need a, tech, a book or anything, please notify us here at the office. It's open on Tuesday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. and we will get you what you need. Thank you and God bless you. At this time, we'll bring forth Sister Jen. Good morning, church family. In summation of today's lesson, Mordecai and his family had come to Persia as virtual slaves, captives of Jerusalem's last stand against the Babylonians. In enemy territory, Mordecai succeeded in business. Esther, his cousin, was selected from all the beautiful women in the land as King Xerxes' wife. They both hid their Jewish heritage. Yet when a crisis came, Mordecai stood tall, showing extraordinary courage. The king had named evil Haman his second in command, and everyone bowed before him. Everyone except Mordecai, who stayed on his feet. Perhaps he knew of Haman's character and of his hatred for Jews. It infuriated Haman when Mordecai would not bow to him so much so that he had King Xerxes to issue a decree to all the Jews in the Persian Empire that no bowing to him would mean an evil, tortuous death. In the decree, he probably did not know the Jewish people, however. When Haman set out to annihilate all Jews in the empire, Mordecai urged Esther, who had been queen now for about four years, to come out completely even at the risk of her life. Clearly, loyalty to their people came before safety or success. Esther boldly responded with, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Esther 4, 16. She asked Mordecai to gather all the Jews in Susa to fast for her for three days. She and her maids fasted and prayed in the palace as well. Esther then planned a banquet that included Haman and Mordecai. On the second day of the banquet, Esther courageously told Mordecai of Haman's plot to kill all Jews. He soon realized that she was a Jew and looked at Haman with total disgust. For Haman was exposed as wicked, a traitor to the king, and the enemy to the Jews. King Xerxes angrily left the room. Haman begged Esther to save him, so much so that when the king returned, he thought that he was trying to molest her. Haman had violated all the rules. This was a capital crime. The sentence was death. Yes, death. He ordered the guards to cover his head in preparation for execution. Ironically, at one time, 
Haman was furious because the Jew would not bow before him. But now he was bowing before one, begging for his life. Mordecai's stand and Esther's courage led to a dramatic turnaround for the whole community of Jewish exiles. King Xerxes rewarded Mordecai with a high position in his court. The three main points are, number one, church family, remember, ungird your plans with fasting and praying. Do your homework. Follow the established protocol of the system and respect those in authority. Number two, no deed, good or bad, good or evil, goes unnoticed by our omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient God. Justice will prevail because he said it will. He always honors the promise that he made about the Israelites to Abraham as his chosen people. And thirdly, in our world today, we must remember always to speak up for what is right for us, our church, and our community. God will always be with us when we choose to take a stand for justice. Amen, amen. Last Sunday was a party. Last Sunday was a celebration. Last Sunday, we joined together and witnessed the most important event in human history, the resurrection of Jesus, the conquering of the grave, the redemption of creation. But what happens this week is no less amazing. Jesus didn't just rise and ascend. He didn't just come back for the celebration. He came back with a message. He came back with marching orders. He came back to say, now it's your turn. I have done my part in bringing the kingdom, but just as God sent me, now I am sending you. So go everywhere, make disciples, baptize them, teach them. Life will still be tough, maybe tougher, but know that through all of this, the trials and the joy, the tears and the laughter, I am with you. Always to the very end. Thank you for tuning in to this morning's broadcast here at Hutchison Missionary Baptist Church in the beautiful city of Montgomery, Alabama. It's the church without walls, beyond the four walls. And it is even more special because this is the Sunday after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we have celebrated his resurrection, this is now an opportunity for us to walk in our resurrection. And so you're not on today's broadcast by accident. I believe that God has ordered your steps to connect with us. And we are excited about the worship experience today. Buckle up your seatbelts, get the family in. I want you to be sure today as you're watching the broadcast, take your selfies, take your usses with the family. Let's be sure to post it using the hashtag Hutchison Higher. That fits right in with the resurrection because we are believing that God is going to lift us to a higher place, not only corporately as a church, but God wants to lift you today as you take part in this worship experience. And so start your watch parties. Be sure to follow us here on Facebook. Share the broadcast with your friends. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. Let us stay engaged. This is now more than ever important for us to stay connected as the family of faith. So get your minds and your attitudes in a place of total adoration and worship to our resurrected Savior, our conquering King, 
He's greater than Corona. He's greater than any challenge we face in this earthly experience. Let's worship him. Let's lift him up as we go higher in the worship experience. I want to welcome to the Hutchison family our guest worship leader, Benet Clark. In the name of Jesus, hi. Come on. Hallelujah. God, we love your name, our Lord. Yeah. Let's say, oh. 
Yahweh make a miracle work Promise keep light in the darkness My God, that is who you are And you are here Moving in our midst And I worship you I worship you, and you are here, you're turning lives around, and I worship you, I worship you, oh, they make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are oh we make a miracle work promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are can we lift it up all over the world can we say we make a miracle work all from a steeper Light in the darkness, my God That is who you are We make a miracle work all from a steeper Light in the darkness, my God That is who you are by now, but Congress has finally agreed and passed a stimulus package for us during these very difficult times. I, I'm sure you're like many who's waiting on more information. How much am I going to get? When am I going to get it? If, if it's even going to be enough to meet the need that I have, even if I get it. So many questions and little excitement whole lot of anticipation and expectation. But let me take this opportunity to tell you about another stimulus package. It's actually a better one that's been around for some time. God has a proven track record 
of taking care of his people. Whether it was Isaac that sold in the time of a famine and reaped over double. Whether it was the widow who was wondering how she was going to feed her son. They were also in a time of famine, but she dared to obey the word of the prophet to give him a cup of water and a mor morsel of bread. And she and her son never went a day without food and resources. Be not dismayed whatever betide. God will take care of you. Precious promises feel scripture that God will supply all of our needs. But we've got to obey his word in order to see those promises be made manifest in our lives. It's a prophet Malachi that said, bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. In other words, that the work of the ministry can continue to go forward. And I wanna encourage you as so many others throughout generations, I wanna encourage you to trust God, to obey his word, to try Jesus and watch him give you a better stimulus package. Even though we're not able to gather corporately in the house of worship, we made giving convenient and accessible for you. First, you can download the Givelify app on your phone. You can search Hutchison Missionary Baptist Church and there after setting up your giving profile, you can give and, and you can keep on giving even after this storm passes over. You can visit our website, hutchisonmbc.org there is a uh, Givelify link for you without even having to download the app. You can still give via the church's website. Our office hours are Tuesday through uh, Thursday, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can bring your offering here during those times or even on Saturdays from 9 to 12. Someone will be here to receive your gifts in person. And I'm proud to announce for those who are part of my generation, we have Cash App. Yes, the church has Cash App. And our name is dollar sign Hutchison MBC. Today, you can become a part of the giving experience using one of these convenient giving methods. And so it is simple. You have no excuse not to try God, not to take God at his word, not to become a part of God's stimulus package. And together, our little becomes much in the hands of God. As a community of faith, we want to continue to go forward in the work of ministry, and we need your help. Give today, support today, take God at his, at his word today, and watch him secure your future. God will take care of you.
I'm standing now in the worship space and hangout spot for our youth here at HMBC. Kids, I want you to know that I am incredibly honored and humbled to be your pastor. And I look forward to working with Ms. Dotson and all of the parents and those who have a heart here at Hutchison for molding and lifting, elevating our youth to their potential in God. I'm looking forward to working with you all. I believe it, that the best is yet to come. There's so much in our youth and the city needs to see it. The world needs to see it. That's why I'm making an appeal for all of our youth. I want you to stay tuned. We're gonna have some hangout meetings even before we get a chance to be physically in our worship space again. I wanna connect with you. I wanna hear from you and your parents about how we can make our youth ministry the best possible here in our city and beyond. Now listen, we have a track record of developing and molding the potential in our youth. That's what you all did for me. You gave me a chance 15 years ago to be the youth speaker here. And we have so many others that are waiting for a chance, for an opportunity. Now listen, children, if you're watching and you want to exercise your gift and talent on the broadcast, I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to include you as we're planning for future broadcasts here at Hutchison. Don't be afraid to let us know. Call us at the office. Shoot us an email. We want you to be included. As we have done in the past, we will continue to highlight our amazing youth and young adults here at HMBC. And today, we have Miss Trinity Ross. She's going to bless us as we prepare our hearts to receive the word of the Lord. She is a freshman at the University of Alabama, majoring in acting, a graduate of Booker T. Washington Magnet High School, and she was one of the MPS students included in the Alabama Shakespeare Festival's rendition of Four Little Girls. This young lady has amazing potential, and I want us to celebrate how God is using her, not only in today's broadcast, but let's continue to push her and others to grow and to reach their fullest potential in God. She's going to bless us today with amazing grace. Let's clap it up for her. Let's welcome her as we make ready to receive God's word. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost and now I'm found, was blind but now I see my chains are gone, I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns on me. Amazing grace T'was grace that taught my heart to fear And raised my fear Relieved How precious did that grace appear I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy Love, 
amazing grace, unending love, amazing grace, unending love, amazing grace. Can't you just give God praise right where you are? God, we bless you. We appreciate you for your amazing grace. I thank you. I thank you this morning because somebody can testify that it was your grace that raised them, saved them, freed them, and gave them another chance. We thank you right where we are for your grace. And I thank you for your grace that's here right now speaking to us and giving us a right now word speak to our hearts holy spirit i decrease that you may increase and i pray that you would stand now in my body and think through my mind and speak with my tongue cause your name to be glorified your people to be edified the devil to be horrified and we give you the glory because even though we are in difficult and uncertain times you're still worthy of all the praise worthy of all the glory worthy of all the honor in the mighty name of jesus somebody shout amen amen and amen well right where you are come on give the lord another hand clap of praise because he is so worthy he is so worthy to be praised this morning I want to take you to the gospel of St. John chapter number 20 John chapter number 20 and we want to begin at the 19th verse John chapter 20 verse number 19 and 20 and then we're going to skip to verse number 24 to 29 it says then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the jews jesus came and stood in the midst and he said to them peace be with you when he had said this he showed them his hands and his side then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. But check this out. Verse number 24 reveals something. It says, now Thomas called the twin. One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. He missed church. He was missing. Then the other disciples therefore said to him, we have seen the Lord. Yeah. So he said to them, unless I see his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and put my hand into his side i will not believe and after eight days his disciples were again inside and thomas with them jesus came and the doors being shut he stood in the midst and said peace peace to you then he said to thomas reach your finger here look at my hands reach your hand here and put it in my side do not be unbelieving but believing and then thomas answered and said to him my lord and my god jesus said to him thomas because you have seen me you believe but blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed yeah. i want to talk this morning about the christ of christianity can you say that with me the christ of christianity my brothers and my sisters we are living in a time where our faith is being tried That's right. these are times where our faith is being tested like never before in, in, in essence this is a time where we're really going to see who's a Christian and who is not yeah. wow. 
Because we have now discovered that Christianity is not about the mundane, routine, religious activities, uh, doing church as usual, coming within the four walls of the church and, and going through all of the motions that I submit have become meaningless to us. Now we, we're going to see whether it's real in your heart. You can't come to church, so can you have church in your house? Can you praise God without instruments? Can, can you worship God without being uh, in a full sanctuary? In fact, I, I've got to be honest, this has been a test of my faith because even as I am preaching to you, I'm preaching in an empty sanctuary. It's just, a, it's just a few of us. I've got to be transparent. It's not the same as normal Sunday morning. I don't, I don't get to hear your amens. I pray that you shout in your living room. I pray that you shout at the table, but I don't get to hear you right now. But because it is real and it, it's real on the inside, I really don't need a full sanctuary. I, we, we give it all that we have when we preach. We give it all that we have when we sing because this is a time where those who really believe, those who really say, I am a Christian, it's being revealed now. Whose side are you on? Are you really on the Lord's side? This is an opportunity, my brothers and sisters, for us to show what Christianity is all about. Can't you just look at the first piece of that word? Christ. 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 There is no Christianity without Christ. We're on the heels. This is, this is the Sunday after Resurrection Sunday. Folk tuned in to the broadcast that aren't even tuned in this week because it's typical. They come in for Christmas, Mother's Day, or Easter. Y'all ain't helping me up in here. Yeah. So, 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 so now I've got to, I've got to see those who will tune in after Easter. Sh showing the essence of who Christ is to you is not about tuning into the broadcast on Easter, but I submit that you really see what we're made of after Easter. We really show what we're made of beyond Sunday and I believe that God has strategically positioned us in this moment that Christ can be glorified. That's why you ought to right now give God praise because you know that Corona is not in control. Yeah, Corona has disrupted our normal but I, I need about 50 people on the broad that can just come in Christ still rules Christ still reigns he's in control and that, that, that's the moment that we're in we're, we're in a moment we're in a moment just as I believe the disciples were in post resurrection they were in here it is a, a moment of fear they were in a moment of uncertainty. How do you know that, brother pastor? Because verse number 19 says, Then the same day at evening. It is evening. It is the evening of resurrection. It has gotten dark. The sun has gone down. It's the first day of the week, which is Sunday. It's, it's Sunday, and the doors are shut. It's Sunday, and we're not in the house of worship. It's Sunday, and we're in a it, we, 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 we have an empty sanctuary. The doors are shut. Why? Because they're quarantined. They're, they're not quarantined because of COVID-19. They're quarantined because they are afraid. They're, they are quarantined. They have shut themselves away because now they don't know what's going to happen to them since their Savior, since their Lord Jesus Christ seems to have been defeated. And there are some right now that's, that, that would dare insinuate or assert that God is not in control. But don't you dare be misled, misled in a 
time like this, God is still in control. Somebody ought to shout it right now. God is still in control. You see, you see, there are moments where God seems to lay low, where heaven seems to be silent, where it seems like the sovereign is no longer in control. And he only does this not because he's not in control, not because heaven ain't speaking, not because he doesn't rule or reign, but I believe it's a divine setup for God to show up and show out. I dare you to just give God glory because he said it's a setup. It's a it's a setup. And 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 and, and in this setup where God seems to be silent, where where heaven seems to be to, to, to be laying low, and now I don't see the sovereignty of God on display, they have missed the memo. You see, it was the women. You remember what I preached about last week. Uh, it was the women that first saw Jesus. It, it was the women that became the first preachers. It, it was the women that became the first proclaimers that Jesus had gotten. A, I know my women ought to be putting some hearts on the broadcast right now because we're in a season now where, where men seem to be dominating. But don't you dare. I want you to remind them the next time they try to tell you you what you can't say remind them that if it hadn't have been for us the word wouldn't have got to the disciples the text says that in the morning the women started preaching and they were the ones that took the word to the disciples you remember the disciples they ran in fear the disciples left the foot of the cross and they shut themselves away but here's what I love about God that even when you shut yourself away from God even when you have isolated yourself from God even when you think that you can hide from God God says I'm not going to wait on you to come to me I'll come to you that's what I love about the Christ of Christianity I love number one that he is a resurrected savior I love it I love it because they are fearful right now they are scared right now because the last time they saw him he was on a cross the last time they saw him his head was now in the locks of his shoulders and he, he's dead and they're making arrangements to put him in Joseph's new tomb but they missed the memo that's why you better show up for church that's why you gotta stay close to God in a time like this because you may miss the memo you may they miss the good news. You may miss what God has done. He's doing a new thing. And you don't want to be caught on where God was. You want to be present where he is. Yes. And it's amazing. Jesus says, I'm not going to wait on you to come to me. They are afraid. They are locked away. They have shut themselves off. And here it is. Jesus says, I'm going to stand in your midst. That's why uh, you, 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 ought not be, you ought not be worried that you're not in physically the house of worship this Sunday morning. No, 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 no. I believe that Christ is making a visitation to your house. He's right where you are. You ought to just act like he's in your house there's something about knowing that he's in the house you ought to shout like you know he's in the house you ought to holler like you know he's in the house because he will come right in the midst he's in the midst and he's in the midst as a resurrected savior they now have to shift their perspective uh-huh See, we've got to shift our perspective on God. We've got to see him as one who is more powerful than any force that will ever come against us. That's why I shouted, greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. And notice what he said. He says to them, peace be with you. 
peace be with you because I have been resurrected. The last time you saw me, you had every right to be sad, but right now, I have risen from the dead. I'm alive. And when you know God is alive, when you, when you know the Christ in Christianity, that he's a risen Savior, that he's alive, and when he's alive within you, you have peace to go to sleep tonight. You don't know you don't know when you're going to get your stimulus check, but you got peace. You don't know, amen, how your needs are going to be met, but you got peace. You don't know how long this thing is going to last, but you got peace. You don't know whether you'll get sick in your body, but you got peace. You don't know what tomorrow holds, but you got peace because you know who's holding tomorrow. The Christ of Christianity is a resurrected Savior. He's a resurrected Savior who comes. Now, now notice he comes to these disciples. It's ten of them. Remember, remember, Judas has 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 committed suicide, and but 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 there are ten that are present, and here it is. One is absent. One is absent. One is absent. It, 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 it was the pressure of this moment that even though the others had shut themselves away, Thomas, Thomas says, here it is, I'm not going to even come to the shut-in. Notice, he's, he, says, he says, I ain't coming to the shut-in. At, at least they were together. At least they maintained their sense of community. But Thomas said, I ain't going to even show up for all of that. And can I tell you, there are people that respond to these times in their own way. There, there are some people that can lift up holy hands, but for some people, they're just like Thomas. They don't see it. They, they don't see Christ in all of this. They don't see how God is in control and as a consequence they take it a little bit harder than the rest and so here it is Jesus shows up on resurrection evening but then the text says eight days later he comes back he comes back he preached on resurrection evening peace be with you but eight days later he comes back and he, this time he ain't coming for the ten he's coming for the one that missed church last Sunday and that's why you ought to give God glory because God will come back to reach the one that was missing he shows up and he shows up eight days later he said I know you've been missing I know you've been taking this a little bit harder than the rest but he says since you missed the first sermon let me preach the same sermon and tell you like I told them last Sunday peace be with you hallelujah some of you others may have forgotten about you others uh, may let you have a pity party but God said I'm going to come to you because you are special to me you are a prized possession of mine I've got work for you to do and I'm going to show up to let you know that I am God it was important for Jesus to come eight days later because Thomas told them when they said oh we had a wonderful resurrection sir we had a wonderful time we saw Jesus here it is Thomas said I don't believe that if he don't come and I don't see the nail prints in his hand if I don't see where they stuck him in the side you know you got people like that in Hutchison who don't believe no they, they ain't got no faith they, they don't believe they, they didn't believe we could get a pastor they didn't believe the church could survive they didn't believe that we would emerge from this but I've come on this broadcast you missed the Easter message but I'm coming to let you know Jesus is alive and will be not dismayed whatever the time God will, God will. Yes. take care of you you know what I love about this Christ in Christianity is not only is he resurrected but he's relatable He's relatable. Here, here it is. 
he knows the position that the disciples are in they're not in a place of faith to come to him so he comes in to them he he comes to them he he walks through the walls he knocks down the door you see I'm not just talking about physical doors and physical walls but there are many of you who do not believe that Christ is still relevant in a time like this we no, we just think that he is some ancient historical figure we we think that he has just done great things yesterday we we think that uh, that, that 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 he was just awesome yesterday but is there anybody that can testify that from age to age he is still relevant he is still relatable he can meet me right where i am he says he says to the 10 he says i i want you i want you to look at me you remember you you remember those nails that were in my hand look at them look at them look at them it's me it's me it's it, it's me yeah you, you you see where they pierced me in my side it's it's me yeah this is this is not a, a hallucination this is this isn't an imagination it, it isn't your imagination running away with you it is me i am relatable i'm here for you i know what it feels like i know why you shut yourself up i know that you have questions about tomorrow i know that you're weak in this present moment i want to tell somebody god knows how you feel god knows what you are dealing with god knows the challenges that you are facing and that's why he came back eight days for thomas because he's relatable just like that he knows that everybody ain't gonna show up for church he knows that there are many people that would have never walked through these physical doors so he just shut the whole church down moved us all virtual where folk that would only watch a virtual broadcast you do know Hutchinson wasn't virtual before this and so now we're virtual and we're reaching people that would have never come in here to see us in our white hats you need what they would never see us in our black suits they would never listen to pastor in his red robe but now you're watching us on Facebook because we want to show you he is relatable Listen, listen, listen to what the Bible says. We, we have not a high priest. Here it is. That hasn't been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But he was tempted in all points such as we yet without sin. And so yeah. God knows what you're going through. Can I tell you that one more time? God knows what you're going through. God oh. knows what it feels like God knows God knows God knows and here's what he's doing he's not only resurrected he's not only relatable but here's what he's doing in both of these moments he's revealing himself oh yeah that's what I love about the Christ in Christianity. He knows how to reveal himself as only he can to each of us notice here notice 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 he shows up for the 10 on resurrection evening and he comes to them and 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 the disciples they they believe once he showed them once once they were able to to look at him and see yes it's jesus they gladly received him but notice he had to take on an entirely different approach with thomas Thomas had already said last Sunday, he said, I don't care how good of a service y'all had with Pastor Meadows, unless I can touch the nails in his hand, unless I can touch his side. See, some people require a little more faith. God has to work with them a little bit more. And that's why before you ever with your church itself look down on anybody, you just remember where you were before God turned your life around. I believe that when we come back to church we're going to come back with a different mindset we're going to come back with a different disposition and we're not going to look down and frown down upon others but we're going to say God's going to meet you right where you are and the same way he revealed himself to me he'll reveal himself to you now this is a powerful revelation because Jesus was not there in the after church meeting. He was not there 
No, he wasn't there physically, but he knew what Thomas said to those disciples. He knew that Thomas said, unless I feel it, unless I can put my finger in the holes in his hands, unless, unless I can put my finger in his side, I will not believe. Isn't it amazing? He was not physically there, but he already knew and no one had to tell him. Oh, I pray that this will be a moment where God will reveal himself to you right now where, you'll, where, where it will be as if God was in your bedroom eavesdropping on the conversations or, or eavesdropping on the internal conversation you were having inside of yourself. God knows what you've been saying. God knows the, what you, what's been hindering you from coming in and that's why he he says, whatever I got to do to show myself to you, I will do it. You matter so much to God that he will use one approach for me and he'll use another approach for you. But there ought to be somebody that can testify. However, he's got to get to you. He will come to you. I, I love this about God. I'm out of my time, but can I tell you, God has a track record of revealing himself to people. He has a track record of showing up in situations and, and revealing something about himself. Yeah, you've got to understand, you've got to understand that one day uh, Abraham, Abraham, Abraham was in a, a difficult moment. His back was up against the wall. You see, God had promised Abraham that I'm going to bless you with a son and, and then God took the son that he had blessed him with and he says Abraham I need you to do something it's going to be crazy but I need you to take that son up to the mountain I need you to sacrifice your only son I need you to sacrifice your only son and, and now Abraham is saying now hold on Lord you told me that you were going to bless me with a son and then you were going to give me grandchildren that were going to be scattered across the whole span of the earth now you're about to kill the son you bless me with and and, and 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 here it is here it is god says i'm gonna test you abraham to see if you're gonna obey me it, it, it's many times in our lives where we don't know how god is gonna work it out but i've discovered that while you're trying to figure it out god has already worked it out and so now abraham he gets on the top of the mountain and, and he's about to run raise his hand and, and he's about to kill his son and God stops him and he says look over in the bush there's a ram caught in the thicket and in that moment Abraham calls him Jehovah Jireh my provider if he had not gone through what he went through in that moment he would not have known that God could make a way out of no way. Oh, some of y'all missed that. Let me give you another story. Let me let me give you another story because now the children of Israel are in the wilderness and now they are hungry and now they are thirsty and all of a sudden God causes manna to come out of heaven and when they start complaining about the bread, he calls quail to come out of heaven and when they said we were thirsty he said I'll bring water out of the rock and they discovered that even in the wilderness God can bring water even in my moment of hunger he'll be bread in a starving land even when I want meat he'll give me meat when I get sick of bread is there anybody here that can look back over your life go down memory lane and you can testify that God has revealed himself if I had not gone through what I went through I would not know what God could do y'all 
going to miss that. If I had not gone through what I went through, I would not know what God could do. And can I tell you this morning, there's a reason why we're going through what we're going through. Because if we would not go through this moment, we would not know what God God could do. Oh, somebody ought to help me celebrate because God is up to something. Come on, let's go home, guys. I want to tell you that Christ is getting ready to show up and show out in your life. I know you think he can't make himself real, but in the midst of Corona, Christ is getting ready to show himself, to show himself mighty, and to show himself strong. I was listening, I was listening to the news, and Lester Holt was doing an interview on the news. This was when Corona first started to raise his hand and he was wondering where could we go that was safe and everybody was saying stay in the house everybody was saying stay six feet away everybody was saying wear your mask but here's what happened the doctor walked him out and he was now in the heat of the sun and he said believe it or not I know everybody's saying stay inside but he said when you're in the sun really that's the safest place that you can be because it's a natural disease killer when the sun he was talking about the sun shines on you they say corona has got to get away from you and i got a revelation in that moment and it wasn't about the sun it was about the son while i'm trying to stay in get in the sun don't just talk about the sun get in the sun and corona has got to leave you when the sun is shining on you and all i'm trying to tell you is when you get in christ corona gotta leave you when you get in christ depression gotta leave you when you get in christ headache gotta leave you when you get in christ everything that tries to destroy you has got to leave you alone is there anybody here that can give god glory because you know there's something about the son there's something about jesus i get joy when i think about jesus i can go to bed with peace of mind when i think about jesus you ought to help me call it jesus you ought to type it in the computer jesus who is this jesus he's mary's baby he's joseph's son jesus he's the lily of the valley jesus he shelter in the time of storm jesus he's a rock in the weary land jesus he's water in dry places jesus bread in a starving land jesus bridge over troubled waters jesus he's the doctor that's never lost a patient jesus he's my lawyer in the courtroom jesus he's everything i need can somebody give him glory jesus 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 he's my god jesus he's everything i need help me praise jesus jesus 
Jesus, I want you to know that he wants to show himself. This is now a moment where you can discover Christ, the Christ of Christianity. You, you're on this broadcast now and, it, and, and, and you're like those disciples, you shut yourself away. I'm not talking about just physically, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about spiritually, emotionally. I'm, I'm, I'm talking about you put up this boundary between you and God. You, 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 you're such a macho man. You say, you say it, it don't take all of that. You're such a, a, a strong, phenomenal woman and you don't think you need Jesus. Maybe you're in the youthfulness of your days and you say, I got time to discover Jesus. You say, I'll live my best life and then I'll come to Jesus Christ. But I, I want you to understand, you hadn't started living until you discovered the Christ in Christianity. He wants to make himself real to you right now. And even though he's standing right here, he needs you to surrender. He needs you to give yourself completely away to him. He's waiting on you. Matter of fact, he ain't waiting on you to come to him. He's already with you right where you are. And you say, Pastor, I, I can't wait till the doors of those church open. I'm coming to see you. I want to say to you, I don't know when these doors will open. But I do know that he's behind your doors. He's with you right now. You don't have to wait until you can come in this physical building. He wants to save you right now. You don't have to wait until these physical doors open. You can become a member of this church right now. I want you to think for just a moment. What would happen if your life ended this evening? Matter of fact, life is so unpredictable. You're here in this hour and you could literally be gone the next hour. I've seen people that put up Facebook status or they tweet or they post something on their Insta story and in just a moment, people are shocked because they're gone. You don't need to wait until you can come in this physical building because life ain't gonna wait on you. You have an expiration date that you know nothing about. Death comes without warning. Life is filled with so many uncertainties. But when Jesus is in your life, yes. he'll make a difference. He makes a difference not only in this life, but he gives you the assurance that when this life is over, that you can be with him. I love what he says to Thomas. He says, Thomas, you believe because you have seen. You believe because you can physically see me as Christ face to face. But then he says something. Blessed are those who have not seen yet they believe. In other words, that becomes the essence of our Christian faith. I have never seen Jesus face to face. But I can feel it. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my heart. I can feel him in my feet. That, that's why I'm preaching like I'm preaching. That's why we've been singing like we've been singing. It's because he's in us. Though we have never seen him. He is real. I believe him before I see him. One day I know in my heart that I will see him face to face. Oh, yeah. And I don't want to just see him. But I want to hear him say well done. He ain't got to say, well done, pastor. He ain't even going to say, well done, singer. Well done, my good and faithful servant. 
You don't have to see him. You don't have to touch him. But you can believe him through the lens of faith. I know it's hard to rationalize in your human mind. I know you got your degree on the wall and that degree, you got more degrees than thermometers and you don't think you need Jesus. You need him. You got money and you, you don't think you need Jesus. Isn't it amazing? Everybody that got degrees, many of them don't even have jobs right now. They've been laid off, furloughed. Folk got money, can't even spend it. Their favorite store isn't even open. We attach our confidence to all of this stuff. And now I pray by faith, you will open your heart to the Christ that you just heard me preach about. I want you to surrender all. As, as Benet comes and she sings, I surrender all, I want you to shoot us an email, hmbcprayer at gmail.com. If you're not saved, I want you to become saved right now. If you want to become a member, I want you to shoot us an email. We, we want to connect with you. We're going to call you. We're going to pray with you. We're going to receive you in. Don't you dare wait. Don't you dare delay. You don't know what tomorrow holds, but the word of God says, the day you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Surrender all. Surrender all. Surrender all. As Benet sings, I want you to surrender. I want you to surrender. Oh, to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence.
God bless you, my friends. Before we uh, sign off today, I want you to know how grateful I am that you took the time to worship with us here at Hutchison Missionary Baptist Church today. I pray that the worship uplifted you, that the word spoke to and fed your spirit in a very special way as we navigate through these very uncertain times. I pray that you'll see me as more than just that young guy that preached well today. If indeed you're without a church home, I pray that you can receive me as your pastor. I pray that you'll connect with us as a family. And even more than being a part of this family, I want you to be a part of the family of faith, a part of the broader body of Christ. It isn't just about Hutchison. I want you to be sure as you leave this broadcast in all of the uncertainties and unpredictability of life that your soul is anchored in the Lord, that your heart is in his hands. That's the hope of resurrection. That not only do we get to talk about what happened in the life of Jesus Christ, but Jesus' story changes our story. Regardless of where you are right now, God wants to give you a better ending than the way you began. And make no mistake about it, we are not at the end of your story. Our story won't end with Corona. God has a higher height in store for us as a church family, but you individually. And so today, if you want to connect with us or if you want to connect with Christ, be sure to email us at hmbcprayer at gmail.com. A few of you have already joined us and there's still room. There's still so much room for you. And I'm looking forward to praying with you, to partnering with you, and to welcoming you as an official member of the family. We're not gonna wait until the doors of the church open. This is your opportunity today. Thank you again for worshiping with us and to all of Hutchison family. I want you to know Pastor loves you so very much and I want you to stay connected with us. The, the number is right there on the screen. I want you to text us today if you're not a part of our texting list. I want you to stay connected with us. Follow us here on Facebook. Subscribe to us here on YouTube so that you can stay in the loop on what God is doing here in the Hutchison Nation. And I believe it. The best is still yet to come. You be blessed. You have a wonderful rest of your day. And remember, this too shall pass because we know the Christ of Christianity.